It's got to do with Town Hall 10. And Town Hall 10 without Siege Machines is extraordinarily difficult. And Synthe breaking out the math hogs at Town Hall 10. Exocyst is live at Town Hall 14. And he's coming in with a Golem Avalanche Barch. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric. Do you like creative attacks? Well, you're in the right spot. Town Hall 10 to Town Hall 14. It's the Eric Cup. The teams are going to be awarded today for doing creative attacks decided by the viewers of either zero, one, or two bonus stars added to their total at the end of the war. We have Tribe Gaming versus MCES today. At Town Hall 14, we have King's been playing. Town Hall 13, Elec. Town Hall 12, Nachoa. Town Hall 11 is Uriam. And Town Hall 10 is Synthe. On the other side here, playing out of Tribe Gaming, we've got Excosist playing at Town Hall 14 and at Town Hall 10. We have Kronos playing at Town Hall 13 and 12. And then we have Knowledge playing at Town Hall 10. And we'll see what these pros have for us today. Let's kick into it, guys. If you're new here, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more. And let's see what Kronos is kicking us off with as he comes in with a i don't know <laughs> town hall 13 he's got a flame flinger in this one it looks like he's got a couple of dragon riders super barbarians a queen charge and a whole bunch of wall breakers here bringing almost purely rages into this attack here he's also got a couple of ice golems in the mix and we'll see what we can do with that as they are running an anti two-star base i'm honestly it's hard to be super creative when they run anti two-star bases, and uh, I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. We'll see if he can get it done here as he sends in that Flame Flinger from the top corner, staying away from all these ground expos that are all across the bottom of the base here. The Queen getting ready to go in. She takes out the Eagle Artillery, and I guess she doesn't necessarily have to enter that compartment. She can walk beyond it and continue rounding around the corner there. It's already trimming out that left side and the right side as well. I'm ready for some entries into the base there. No test is popping up in the top corners. He drops in a couple of minions to go clear up the trash buildings while the Flame Flinger continues on to only target defenses up there. But it will eventually run into that enemy king and it'll be a little bit of an issue. He opens up the right side compartment with a wall break. That way the next wall breakers can target all the way middle. Sends in another one to open up the CC. That'll make the queen go all the way middle. She has to go to ability though, but that ability will carry her through the enemy world champion. So it's not going to go to waste here. He will take the enemy RC down and he'll continue to march his way into the base here. But there's a lot of damage upcoming here. He sends in a dragon rider and a balloon to go quickly take that air defense down and rush into... That multi-inferno, the queen is able to get some of the expos down. He'll put in the king and the warden on the opposite side. Wall break them in as well. He's got a couple of ice golems that he can use with his world champion to assist as well. Dragon riders take out that right side compartment. Get the scatter shot down. The queen steps into the town hall. But he does hit some black mines over on the right side. And the dragon riders aren't going to last very long. But he's really, really thinned out space overall. And he's got a nice push here with the king. Tanking a lot of the high damage output defenses on the base here. So RC sweeps in. Will get the expos down. And he's got one last dragon rider out of his flame flicker that finally goes down up top as the queen beats through a wall. Tries to survive. But no. Slightly late on that rage here. Gonna cost him his queen. But he does have a Valkyrie over there that picks up the healers. What? Valkyrie OP. No, that's not a Valkyrie. That is a super barbarian. It's a super barbarian walk. That's what's happening right now. The road champion still looking good here. Still holding her ability. The king will deal with the enemy king. RC ability can get all the remaining defenses right now if he pops it. Boom, boom, boom. Saves the super barbarian. He's got it. Kronos with the opening triple. <laughs> Lost his queen charge. But what a beast of an attack. GG. And a nice way to kick off this war between... Tribe Gaming and MCS. So while we wait for the next attack, here is the schedule for the upcoming matches. We can see that Rakiras and Ryan will face Soham in the semifinals right after Yo-Yo and Fluxy play against Space Station Gaming on the other quarterfinals match. But here we go, guys. We're diving in to... Uh, I keep getting lost on which player is which here. Let me uh, pull our roster back up here. This is MCES. Coming in with a Zap Lalo by the looks of it. Some kind of a Zap Lalo. 
But this is... Oh, I lost. I lost the name. Uh, <laughs> this is Elec at Town Hall 13. Elec at Town Hall 13. Let's see if we can get it done. We got ourselves... The Lightning was able to clear out this left-hand compartment here while the Road Champion ducks in with the King. The Road Champion will follow the King south as the storage will make a little bit of a gap in there for the Road Champion to get forced to the south. Unless uh, that enemy Road Champion distracts her attention a little bit there. But the Queen actually chasing this enemy Road Champion. Okay. He goes invisible to Queen here to defend her from the single Inferno. Dropped in a Skeleton Belt there to assist as well and give the Queen a little bit of tanking. The Ice Golem didn't last forever there. So he still will need to get the Town Hall down. But the Queen is going to keep on going invisible as she continues to march away towards the Town Hall. I don't know if he has enough to actually take the Town Hall with a Queen at Town Hall 13. Like a Town Hall 14 Queen might be able to do it with uh, the assistance of all that extra damage output that she does and a Unicorn or something like that. But he might be in a little bit of trouble here. He'll wall break into the Town Hall. So he's clearly trying to get there. But hold up. Hold up, he was able to keep the queen protected long enough. A giant bomb goes off, a mortar strike. Survive, queen, don't get taken out. Okay, there's ability. He locks out of the town hall and he will get it down. Very, very close to not making his queen all the way in, but here comes a Lalo in from the south side of the base. He's got the stone slammer taking out the multi-inferno and will work its way up into this queen compartment here. He's got the ward ability still Ready to be used here as he starts to get locked onto by that scatter shot. It looks like he is able to get this scatter shot under control, but does it get the multi inferno under control in the middle of the base here? Like the balloons are all gonna get hit by this wizard tower for the most part. That's gonna soften up the entire pack, so that may not give him enough punch here to actually get through the multi inferno. So this dragon is gonna have to take it. More balloons on the top side there to collapse in the Tesla farm. These Teslas are gonna burn up some balloons there. There's a red bomb going off, tornado trap. He's got enough force to take it up top, but the dragon will need to get the multi inferno down, and it looks like it does have it under control here. This is a triple here to open up from MCS. Zap Lalo, not a big creative choice there. Definitely a more meta attack. But they also need to get the stars anywhere they can, so if they didn't have a creative attack choice, better just get a triple, honestly. We'll see. One of the biggest parts of this is they need to win the crowd over. So we'll see. If Exorcist at Town Hall 10 can get it done here. Remember, Town Hall 10 has to be done without a Siege Machine, which makes Town Hall 10 already incredibly difficult. Just in general, very, very, very difficult to do Town Hall 10 without a Siege Machine. But then to create an, or to add in a creative mix is definitely a huge obstacle, and we'll see if they can get it done here. He deploys the healers. Way south next to the queen to try to avoid the air defense range here. He's got hogs. He's got Lalo. He's got baby dragons. And he's got a whole lot of queen charge support here. He'll drop in the king with a couple wall breakers down the line. With the wall breakers and a jump that can get him all the way into the core of the base. King will cut off the queen's pathing and try to drive her in. Guaranteed that she will go in though. The king needs to pop his ability soon and... Hurry up this funnel to make sure that the queen does go exactly where he wants her to go. Like, he does seem to be having it under control here. There's the jump to get the queen access into the core of the base there, where she can reach the multi-inferno and all the expos. will rage it up here. Now, there's not a lot of different troop choices here at Town Hall 10 to be able to take advantage of. So, mixing the Lalo and the Hogs against an anti-two-star base... If he can pull this off, this would be absolutely huge for this team because Town Hall 10 is, like I said, extraordinarily difficult. So to do anything even slightly off meta here could prove to be exceptionally hard to overcome. But he has a couple of headhunters that come out of the defensive CC. He poisons them up and freezes them, locking down multiple spells to deal with the CC. But he is able to get his queen to survive. And now the queen will take out the enemy queen and break off to the left here to go get this multi-inferno down. Healers will get targeted for just a moment, but uh, I hope this queen takes... Oh, wait. Ah. Come on, queen. Hurry up and take the turn. Go off to the left. She should go off to the left here. She should go off to the left. And she should get that inferno down before it causes 
enough damage to kill the healers here. We will rage up, and he needs to get the next phase attack going. He's down to a minute left, and Town Hall 10 doesn't clean up very fast here, so he's got a bookie here. He's going to have to run the Hogs in parallel with the Lalo. Here we go. Hogs in from the bottom. Lalo starts in from the top. We'll get the air defense down and try to push the Queen off to the right side and go get this other multi-inferno down, but only 30 seconds left to go here. He might be in trouble, misjudging the time here, going for the big queen charge, even slowed down a little bit by the Tesla. He's, uh, he's in a time failure, isn't he? I think he has enough force to take out the rest of the base here. Obviously, this queen not really under any threat left on this entire base here. Still holding on to a queen ability. It was a monster queen charge, but he definitely needed a little bit of something extra for that one to make it happen. So, nice attempt here. From Hans, which is Exorcist of Tribe Gaming. 88%. Kingsman coming in at Town Hall 14. All right, guys, this is what we're looking for out of MCS. Now they're breaking out some creative attacks here. Rocked it with the Zap Lalo on their first attack. We've got Kingsman coming in with a Flame Flinger. Double hero charge rocket balloon attack. He's got the queen going to go into the town hall while the warden works his way into the scatter shot here. The warden could be joined by the king. Could have them work together after the warden forms a bit of a funnel while the queen forms the other half of the funnel. They can kind of work together there to sandwich the king right in between and force him into the base. But it looks like the queen is not going to the town hall. Has he started this flame flinger yet? He is not, but he will get the CC pull, and he looks like he's driving his queen into the channel there, where the queen can fight off the CC and get the enemy road champion of the way, which makes the warden walk continue to move almost unthreatened here, but he does need to rage that warden as he is engaging the scatter shot. That was definitely a planned rage there that he would have had to have, even if no Tessas popped on him. He only had one Tessa, so it's not that big of a deal, but he does have the warden taking eagle artillery fire. Lots of ground skills. More Tesla's pop on this warden. Does he have to go to ability there? Oh, he freezes it and goes to ability at the same time. Sneaky goblins are going into the town hall. Make him invisible. We'll get the town hall down. The queen goes to her ability as well. Warden. Hang in there, warden. The RC steps in. He pulls the warden off with the king to save him. Oh, that was clever. That was good timing right there. Save the warden. His queen is beating on a wall, but she does take the turn back. The flame flinger finally starts in from the right side. King gets funneled into the eagle artillery compartment. I really like this approach here. The RC does pick up the healers there as the warden did ultimately die out. But the RC still has her ability. He's out of spells now. He's still got the rocket points for the backside. And unfortunately, he doesn't have a queen ability to power through this enemy queen. So that's going to hurt really, really badly. Loses his queen as a result. But all of the healers have now transferred over to the road champion. Does he have enough to get through? It's a lot of healing, but... Uh, oh! Loses his RC as well. Healers transfer to the king. And his... Flame Flinger will continue working. He's got a little bit more punch here with his Flame Flinger. But if he doesn't get this enemy queen down, the Rocket Plumes aren't going to be able to do a lot here. The King will power through the walls here, but he is losing healers, and he's down to one now. He needs to get this queen to not kill the King through the walls. She jumps, and she's on the wrong side of a wall to be able to actually do anything with here. Drops in the Rocket Plumes across the top of the base there while the king is distracted that queen is one shot look at how much health she has there oh geez <laughs> he's not gonna make it through town hall 14 double hero charge rocket blues the flame flinger will fall short at a 92 percent nice try kingsman nice try here we go knowledge from tribe gaming coming in with a Okay. Oh. <laughs> Makes the... Oh, he made the collectors invisible too? <laughs> oh, that was smart. That was smart. Made the wall breaker invisible. And then made the collectors invisible. So he never pulled the CC. And he just dealt with the CC for two spells. And about 10 to 15 troop space there. That was really, really clever right there. Very, very nicely set up here for Tribe Gaming. And now with those high level potential troops on defense completely negated, it's gonna make the rest of the deck here a lot easier to do. But he's coming in with a 
Golem Avalanche by the looks of it. A couple of golems here, Wizards and Baby Dragon behind. He will wall break his queen into the base here using the Wizards and the Golem out on the right flank there to funnel. We will get that funnel very, very solid here. Drive the King and the Queen into the base, into the base here. He's actually wall broken up the intersection up on the top side to make sure the next wall breaker goes all the way to the core. It will get the walls open, giving him access all the way to the Eagle Artillery. Now we'll see how much value we can get out of his heroes here. He still has the hogs. He still has the balloons. He still has his stone slammer. He pops the ward ability, but it does miss this enemy queen or misses his king while he engages enemy queen. But the ward ability town 11 is not massively consequential because it doesn't last that long anyway. So it's not like town hall 14 where it could be in a complete game changer to rage up those uh, barbarians on the king ability. But he would really like this eagle artillery to go down here with his queen, but his queen is not going to get access to it. The Stone Slammer does give her access down to the bottom base here, and it will eventually go down to the Expos here. Or into the Tesla Farm. It's hard to say right now. Doing some work here. But the Hogs claps in from the left side. He's got Skeleton Spells tanking for the Hogs. Very nicely done with that, but missing some stuff up on the top end. We have enough to take it. I don't know that he has enough to take it. A uh, Dragon Rider and a Balloon come out of the Stone Slammer down at the bottom. He's got a couple of hogs still floating around. Getting hit by a giant bomb, but the Eagle Artillery is doing some work here. He makes the hogs invisible to try to keep him alive, but now he's just down to the Dragon Rider here. It was a solid attempt here. It was very, very nice. I definitely would take consideration into what he did in the opener there and just going completely off meta here and trying something just completely different. And that's what this is all about. We've already seen some new strategies emerge out of this tournament that honestly could become meta strategies. And we'll have to see what emerges out of this because this is where when you, when you force these players to think completely outside of the box there and do weird stuff, like, they're going to come up with some really interesting ideas, and I love what he did with the CC at the start of the attacker, but it is going to fall short. 92% needed the Queen to take the Eagle Artillery to make this work. With her veering off there, it was too much incoming damage, and it could have been the difference there if the King would have got hit by the Warden ability. Unfortunate, but a miss for Tribe Gaming. All right, guys. Uriam from MCS coming in at Town Hall 11. Is going in with a Queen Charge Lalo. Ooh. I don't know if he's going to earn creativity points on this one here. Unless he does something absolutely wild with this... With this Queen Charge. Opting to do regular Wall Breakers instead of Super Wall Breakers, which is kind of interesting. Maybe if he rages up the Wall Breakers and get him to... Get a lot more punch into the base there than Super Wall Breakers because remember one regular ranged up Wall Breaker will open up the wall for two troop space instead of going a lot more. But there's the first Wall Breakers. Do get the wall open inside of the right there. Four troop space is preserved right there. Oh, he sends in the Warden on ground with the Queen, which is a very scary thing to do in Town Hall 11. I don't recommend that. <laughs> but he's definitely trying to add some creative flair into this Queen Charge Lalo. He does always run the risk there of if the Queen goes to ability that the healers will very likely switch over to the Warden. So you want to make sure you use the Warden ability before you use the Queen ability. But he sends in more Wall Breakers, gets the wall open to go to the Artillery and the enemy Queen. He will get the Stone Slammer to go take out the top defenses here and hopefully drive the Queen off to the right. But unfortunately that Stone Slammer is going to open up a lot of walls here and ah, that'll make the Queen circle back though. That'll force it to circle back. He's already got the clean up up top. There's the ward ability covering part of Lalo and protecting the queen at the same time. But unfortunately, his Lava Hound is going to go right over to the right side where the queen missed that air defense instead of going across to the bottom corner. But the Soul Slammer is going to work its way into the Multi Inferno right now. And he will potentially lose some balloons in the process there. The Wizard Tower hitting the other pack. Come on, hold it together here. We'll get that Multi down. Okay. <laughs> Man, that's what happens when you don't have the ward ability protecting your Lalo. You definitely lose out on a lot of value setting the warden with the queen. Because then the Lalo ends up falling short like it is now. But he's got a, a dragon rider that's going to continue on for a little bit further here. But he needs to get this queen to get out of the base. And right now, she's the only thing that can deal with these backside defenses down at the bottom here. So, Dryhard's looking like he's going to fall a bit short on this one. I mean, 
<laughs> uh, we'll give him points there for for trying to do a, a queen charge Lala with the warden on ground and go for the big queen charge. But uh, this Lala falls heavily short here. And it is going to cause him to time fail, I believe. Magically pull through this wall and take out the storage in the next uh, 10 seconds, which he won't. Town Hall 11 heroes can move, but they can't move that fast. It is going to be a time fail. And it looks like a 94%. Nice try to hurry him. Not happening. We're tied up. We're tied up. 7 to 7. <laughs> but a percentage advantage into MCS's favor by six buildings. Tribe Gaming. Coming in with... I believe this is... Kronos at Town Hall 13. Town 12, I mean. Town 12. He's got a Queen Charge... Hog attack, but only 15 hogs in this. He's got a Flame Flinger that's coming in from the top corner of the base. No Expos up in that area that'll stop this Flame Flinger from clearing out the majority of that corner. But there are a couple mortars up there, and mortars can deal some damage to this flame flinger. Not as much as some of the other defenses, but you ping at it for long enough there, it's gonna be a problem. He sends in a hog, two hogs, and a giant at that mortar to make sure that it goes down. So that problem is solved. Very nicely done. The queen. I don't know if she's actually gonna go into the base right here, but he wall breaks even further down the line and then pops his king ability early to try to force the queen into the middle of the base. Lava Hound comes out. That is a max level Lava Hound on defense, which will stall up this queen for a long time. The king was able to funnel up ahead of the queen there by taking out the arc tower and the, the workshop around the corner, which will definitely help this queen charge. But guys, he doesn't have a whole lot of force once he gets done with the queen charge here. So the queen charge has to do everything almost. Like the flame flinger with the hogs and then 13 other hogs are all that he has here to make this push. So he needs to get the Seagull Artillery down. He needs to get this Queen down. Ooh, that was a... Uh, I don't like that. Flame Flinger gonna take a round of Eagle Artillery Strike there and it's gonna break open, dumping the Hogs before he gets the Multi Inferno down. He has no heal spells for this attack. It's all about the Queen Charge. He has to get the Multi Inferno down. If it stands, he's done. Pops the Ward ability to try to protect and he'll try to keep this Queen Charge moving. He's got a Queen Ability still intact here. He's got the Headhunter that's going to go assist at getting that multi down. Does he get it? Oh, it did so much damage, but it finally goes down. A couple of Hogs, Headhunters, and Wizards dropping the backside. The Queen can't quite reach everything out here. But look at that. He gets the top Archer Tower down. The Queen, she can go the distance here. Pops her ability. Come on, he can reach everything. He's got it! Kronos! <laughs> what was that? A 13 hog attack? Let's go! Tribe Gaming with the triple. And they're playing from behind. If MCS can get the triple on this next one. Maybe this could all be decided by the points there at the end. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and, I mean, Synthay can save the day here, but he's he's got to... He's got to do a tail 10. He's got to do a Town Hall 10, and Town Hall 10 without Siege Machines is extraordinarily difficult. And Synthay breaking out the mass hogs at Town Hall 10. Let's go, he's got a Lava Hound as well. What do you do? What do you do with this attack at Town Hall 10 without Siege Machines? A Lava Hound. And an Electro Dragon in from the bottom of the base here. Sends in a couple of blues there to go soak up some black mines in front of that E-Drag. Got a couple of, Oh, wait. Okay, he sends in the Lava Hound. Lava Hound will tank. It's not going to last very long, though. It poisons up to CC. Takes a Black Mine. Single Inferno burns it. He drag getting some chains. There's the Rage. Come on. Hold that single under control here. Super Minion's getting dragged into the poison. Does he get the Inferno down? This is clutch. He frees it again. If he gets the Inferno, he basically did an Electron out of the oh, corner of the base. What? That was enormous value. That is normally done with a Siege Machine, but he somehow pulled it off and got incredible value out of it. 
With the e drag starting on the edge of the base there with a hound invested. But now he sends in the heroes. He's going after the enemy king and queen. And then he can use the heal spells and mass hogs to take out the rest of the base here. And he even has a spare poison since he didn't need it for dealing with the CC completely. And now he can use it on this enemy king and queen. He'll pop that king ability. The enemy queen is touching the wall there with her pads. So that means she will jump the wall, allowing his king to be able to get access to her and get some strikes off instead of just attacking a wall. He starts in the hogs in the top side the queen will take out the bomb tower and split the base to force all the hogs off to the right she still holds her queen ability here this is an absolute brilliant attack here this is incredibly difficult the the difficulty level of this attack is through the roof but synthe is a master of hogs and if anybody can pull this off it is him he's got the multi-inferno engaged and taken down there's the next heal spell as he goes into the expo that'll help him with the wizard tower as well but drops in a couple of blooms to take out the mortar and tank the wizard tower to keep the splash damage off of the hogs last heal spell on the right side the queen going the distance on the left side almost takes out all the defenses now the hogs cross back over and Sente rocking out another town hall 10 no siege machine triple that was absolutely brilliant and yes Honestly, he could have swagged that heal at the end of the attack there. That's why he's the face of this team. That's why Synthe is going to hopefully sway the audience on that one. That was absolutely incredible. GG, dude. GG. He doesn't have any hogs left, though. Like, Or does he? He's got like one left. But the wizards are all beating through the walls over here. He's got to get this done in time, right? Drops in one more wizard to get over to the builder hut here. Top wizards will get that uh, collector down. Guys, he's got it. He's got it. Unless that hogs has a spring trap. No, it doesn't. <laughs> there we go. Wizard step in. All the survives is one solo hog. And he can he can let out a victory call right there. That was incredible. <laughs> GG. We're tied up on stars. But MCS may have just gained a few fans in the vote with that one. And they are six buildings ahead on percentage. Exocyst is live at Town Hall 14, and he's coming in with a Golem Avalanche Barge! <laughs> Let's go! What does he got for us? He's got a blimp. He'll start in a Yeti and a Wall Breaker down at the bottom of the base here. Ooh, definitely, definitely breaking out something interesting on this one here. But if he can get this triple, and he can get the audience to be swayed on the creative vote here. He's going to put his team in a very, very strong position. He sends in that blimp. Blimp will sail across the middle of the base. Will not have to face a sweeper. Does clear a lot of the traps there. What's inside? Rage. Invisibility. Blizzard. Blizzard into Golem Avalanche. Or really Blizzard over the top of Golem Avalanche here as he nukes out the core of the base. Destroys the... Entire core out there getting that multi inferno down, but he still has to cross his way all the way to the town hall He's got barbarians and archers claps in the left side behind the golems and the ice golems out there he Needs to get this multi inferno down, but he'll freeze up on his approach Lots of golems intact here working with the heroes and they're gonna slowly inch out ahead of him He's already funneled up ahead there and with another wall break He can go right into the storage here and get his way into that town hall compartment and circle around He can use his road champion to clear out this entire right hand compartment Not a lot of threats over there for her So her lassie and her will work their way through with a wizard down behind to start to work on the funnel He freezes up the single inferno, but he can't span the distance between the single inferno and the town hall They are a little bit too spread there for the big footprint of that town hall So he'll reallocate the phrase a little bit um, more forward there and hit the warden statue as well but rc trying to hang in there with her ability will finally pop it get the cannons and x or the cannons and arc towers down i mean he does have the tank in position here to get the warden dealt with he's got plenty of barbarians and archers collapsing across the top of the base here rc is going down but she did her job he just needed his queen to step into the last couple defenses she can make it through and the barbarians and archers will work on this cannon while the multi-mortar is tanked if they take it down the queen can take the rest of the base here he can pop that queen ability swag He's got an exorcist with the triple. Will force MCS to triple on their final attack and it'll come down to the vote. This is MCS's chance to sway the audience here, but Tribe Gaming looking strong. Let's go. Nechoa is live.
This attack right here could decide the war and he's coming in with a queen charge mass super barbarian attack here. Coming in with this queen charge at where would you put it? At the town hall. He's got a flame flinger as well. The nice part about the flame flinger when paired with super barbarians is it can open up a lot of the base. Their walls trim out some of the defenses. So it definitely can do a lot of work here but it looks like he's gonna be funneling his queen right into this little gap to step into the expo he'll rage up as he does have a lot of expo fire incoming at him his queen oh he puts a wizard on that builder hop behind him okay i was about to say that was gonna be a little bit of a potential issue he draws out the cc headhunters and super minions pop out of there freeze up the super minions poison up no freeze up the headhunters poison up the super minions catches a black mine but another one goes off and hits his healers there's a wall break into the town hall that one will open up and the next one will try to... Oh, oh, that wall breaker did not get the wall open to get the queen into the town hall compartment. That's a big issue now. I think he intended for both of them to target the same wall and let the queen push into the town hall by opening up that core compartment right in front of her where she's standing. But he will send in a couple of balloons down south. The flame flinger is working in from the far bottom corner here. And the queen is going to have to power through a random wall here. And she chooses one that doesn't give her access to the town hall. Would be a big obstacle for him to overcome. But he... Oh! Oh! Wait! He survive! survived! Oh, they got inside the visibility. And one of the eagle artillery... No, two of the eagle artillery strikes did not go to the healers. The king steps in. The king will take the town hall. This might have been part of the plan here. Super Barbarians across the bottom of the base here where the Flame Flinger continues to work his way forward towards that multi-inferno. King will take that town hall down with his ability, but unfortunately he did lose his queen in the middle of the base and he might struggle to close it out here. I wonder if the king was supposed to go somewhere else. But these Super Barbarians are getting shredded across the bottom of the base here. And he doesn't have an answer for the top end. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the voting commence here. And we will decide this war. So let's open it up here. You guys decide who won. But as it stands, Tribe Gaming will have the percentage and a star advantage. So for MCS to win it, that would mean Tribe Gaming would have to have a 50% zero star vote. And I don't see that happening. <laughs> nice try here, but wait, hold on. Did I call too soon? Well, Hogs came out of his Flame Flinger, tried to do a little bit more work at the end. But no, it's not going to happen. It was a nice attempt here, but he needed his Queen to survive. He needed that extra Wall Breaker to give him access to the Town Hall. And he needed to get the single Inferno down faster, but the queen beating on the wall there did not do him any favors. Nice try. 96% would be the final. We'll start to vote. All right, guys. That's our final score here. And it does look like MCS was able to maintain the percentage advantage, which does make it a little bit more interesting. But we need to go look at the vote here, and we need to find out exactly... Who's getting the most bonus stars here if MCS was able to get two bonus stars and Tribe Gaming was somehow able to only get one, then MCS would take this match and move on to the semifinals. However, Tribe Gaming knocked it out of the park here on the vote. Rocket in 69% of the vote there to give them two bonus stars. Very nice. That's probably worth a, an additional bonus star, right? Yeah, definitely is. <laughs> there we go, guys. Tribe Gaming will move on to the next round of the Eric Cup. And they will face the winner of... That was the wrong button. They will face the winner of Yo-Yo and Fluxy. That is Yo-Yo from Alter Attacks and Fluxy at a Monster. And they're going to be going against Space Station Gaming. Now, I messed up the, the times on the, on the schedule here. But both of those matches are going to be happening January 5th. 3.20 p.m. Eastern and then 4.20 p.m. Eastern. So click on the link for Twitch in the video description and come join us live for those wars. And we'll see you guys in the next one.